Welcome to Untold Physio Stories Podcast, your perfect commute resource with physio failures, successes, interesting cases, and more from the physio and rehab world with your host, Drs. Andrew Rothschild and Urson Religioso. Topical analgesics help patients alleviate pain and reduce discomfort. I recommend and use Helix Professional Pain Relief Creams with my patients. Helix has three new creams they've added to their line of topical analgesics. Joining their pain relieving cream is Triactive Therapy Cream, CBD Therapy, and CBD Clinical Creams. My patients have been raving about these creams, and that's why I'm offering you an opportunity to try these in your practice. Email my exclusive promo code MMT2 to Helix at Helix4, the number four, pain.com to receive samples of these new professional pain relief creams and find a medical to supply distributor near you. You'll get a starter kit with several samples, patient information brochures, and it's a great way to help patients and grow your practice. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. All right, great. Is it Pierre-Yves Bouteau? It is, correct. All right, yeah, I asked my wife how to pronounce it. She's uh, from Mississauga and went to French immersion. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it is. Okay, great. Um, so do you have uh, any questions um, before I just do the intro? Uh, no, I mean, your format, I mean, I've been listening to your podcast for a while, so I kind of feel, I'm, I'm not sure how you edited it afterwards, but um yeah i mean i think i'll just tell my story and basically go from there yeah sure yeah um and also after after i introduce you you can go ahead and you know tell us a little about about your practice and your specialty um, yeah yeah and then I'll, uh, I'll start with that yeah sure and then at the end of course plug whatever and you could also plug your um your uh, bell's palsy program <laughs> yeah sounds good all right great um <clears throat> excuse me also if you have any like if you have a coupon code or something you could give for the bell's policy program just for my listeners or something anything like that yeah do you um so can you, you will you put that in the show notes yeah i could put it in a link yeah so I'll, I'll i can create that right after and then um and then um you'll i'll, I'll just email you the the code that's okay good. yeah and where, where are you uh i am in seattle Oh, you're in Seattle. Okay. Yeah. But are you originally from Canada or something? No, I'm from France. Oh, you're from France. Oh, I yeah. see. I see. Yeah. Okay. I've been, uh, but I've been in the U.S. for <clears throat> more than half my life. So, yeah. Okay. You have to excuse me if I uh, cough or something. I'm actually recording this probably the first time ever in bed with a fever. So, I've had, uh, oh, I've had, the, flu. <laughs> I've had the flu for a couple of days. I canceled all my patients this week and I've just been like barely getting out of bed. Okay. Yeah. No worries. I, yeah. All right. So three, two, one. Welcome back to Untold Physio Stories podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Dr. E with Modern Manual Therapy, Edge Mobility System, and our four-month online mentoring program, Modern Rehab Mastery. My co-host is not with us today, but I have a very special guest all the way from Seattle, Pierre-Yves Buteau. How's it going today, Pierre? It's going well. How are you, Arson? I'm well. I'm well. So tell us a little bit about yourself and then tell us your story. Yeah, so um, I'm originally from France and um, I went to PT school in the U.S. Uh, down in Florida and uh, ended up staying in here. So uh, I've been a PT for over 20 years now and I practice in Seattle uh, where I have a niche in seeing people with facial paralysis, uh, which includes Bell's palsy, Ramsey Hunt and um, other par uh, paralysis diagnosis. And that makes about 30% of my business. So I've been following you online for, for several years now, and I've always enjoyed your, your topic and approach to practicing physio. Uh, and I've also attended your classes on extremities and TMJ, which I also treat. Um, and today my story is in relation to using one of your ISTM tool, the Edge Star. And I've, I've had great results. Uh, using it with uh, my facial paralysis patients. So uh, lots of these patients end up with a um, significant amount of fibrotic tissue in their face. Um, and generally more so if the paralysis is severe and has lasted for many more weeks or months. Uh, and, and I know people hear all the time that Bell's palsy yield on its own, but I'm here to tell you that 30% um, of patients with facial paralysis are actually left with long-term complication because uh, a lot of um, 
uh, complication from the soft tissue restrictions that actually happened and also can develop into the wrong movement pattern retraining, uh, which is called synchinesis. But that's a, a different topic. Um, so anyway, using the edge tool, um, that has allowed me to, uh, to be more efficient uh, in some of the smaller area uh, of the face, uh, which uh, would make it very difficult with uh, a regular size uh, tool. So my story is uh, I had this patient with Ramsey Hunt syndrome, uh, which I guess by now people might have heard of. It's what Justin Bieber had recently. So uh, that was in all over the news, but um, uh, I had seen, so she had seen several practitioner uh, in the past and uh, she finally found me online. Uh, she had a very limited amount of movement. Uh, she had hyperkinesis on her strong side uh, with significant tightness there as well. And uh, as a side note, uh, the mobility of the strong side uh, should also always be addressed first uh, in order to regain symmetry of the face. So, um, uh, I, and I'm just plugging in a few things there because I, I know that most practitioners don't, don't see uh, facial paralysis patients. So, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Uh, so, like I said, that lady, she struggled progressing, um, and I was the only person that she saw for treatment um, that was actually doing hands-on work, uh, and both extra and intraorally. And I remember she had, like, significant restriction along the crease of her nose, like, between the nose and the cheek. And with the star, the star tool, I, I worked that area for a couple of sessions, and on the second session, uh, somewhat out of nowhere, we just heard this loud pop. Um, so I was kind of freaking out a little bit about that <laughs> <laughs> from, the, from the, the noise. So that was very concerning, uh, but the patient was all good. And like immediately she was, she mentioned that her, her face was feeling much looser afterwards. So um, I just, okay. So I just told her, okay, well, we'll, we'll see where you're at next time. And um, uh, we waited a couple of weeks and I saw her again and uh, she reported that her, her face has felt the best uh, it had since her diagnosis. And uh, objectively, she was actually showing quite a bit of improvement with the lifting of her upper lip. So, so yeah, so that's my story. Nothing too crazy, uh, but, um, you know, I, I had some good success with using the, uh, the edge tool there uh, with those patients. So just thought I'd share it. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I mean, I've only seen a handful of Bell's palsy patients because, you know, a good amount of them do actually spontaneously resolve. But you're definitely correct. I mean, that's like saying that all low, low back, you know, 80% of low back pain resolves in four weeks. Well, I know that's been a stat that's been around forever, but all these people still have low back pain. There's no amount of low back right. pain patients for all these different clinicians, right? Right, exactly. um, but yeah, I mean, you brought up a lot of points that me as even a TMJ specialist, it just doesn't occur to me. I mean, like, I, it's embarrassing almost to say that I don't look at the strong side, you know, like I would only look at the paralysis side. Um, right. Interestingly enough, though, I, I did have a patient who um, a couple years after I invented the edge tool, the, the bigger edge tool, and I didn't have the star yet. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. She came in um, with, for maybe TMJ or headache or just cervical issues, something unrelated to her Bell's palsy. And, you know, she she um, told me that her Bell's palsy at this point was already 20 years old and you know mm -hmm. nothing, yeah. could be, nothing could be done. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I said, so, okay, well, let me just see what I can do about it. So I just very lightly used the edge tool only over a couple, couple of sessions all around her masseter, her nasal area. And, um, yeah. you know, temporalis and just all, all around her jaw. And, and only after two sessions, she had perfect facial symmetry, but, wow. but, you know, she couldn't, she couldn't move anything anymore, but she was just so happy that her right. droop, her eye droop and her lip droop were gone. I mean, she couldn't have cared less that she was also better about her headaches and <laughs> her neck pain. That was just a bonus, you know, because you have to look at yourself every day and it's very disconcerting, right? To see that. Yeah, it is. That, asy that asymmetry. People don't realize how powerful symmetry yeah. is in terms of the face. Yeah, it really is. And I think uh, a lot of these people, a lot of these patients are really underserved. Um, you know, most of them are, you go to the ER and you get your meds and 
if you're lucky, you, you go back to your, your GP and, and then they say, well, it's going to be on its own. Come and, come and see me in six weeks. And, you know, for those people that don't really heal correctly, it's pretty disconcerting. And a lot of, uh, I think, the, and there's a lot of education as well that PT can do in, in that regard um, that, you know, but it's rare. I mean, before I, I started this, being into this niche, I probably saw two Bell's palsy patients in 15 years. So, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's. So how'd uh, you get into it? Uh, I actually had it myself, so I started kind of doing some research about like the best treatment because, you know, we there's a lot of um, a lot of PT will treat this with like active movement, and really you shouldn't be treating you shouldn't be using active movement until you actually have some some movement because otherwise it's just like basically trying to turn on a TV that's not plugged in the wall, and there's really no point to that. Uh, it should be mostly like end zone and massage and stretch in the the, the flaccid paralysis stage, and then once the paralysis stage, which when you regain movement, that's when you you can do more neural rehab with specific movement, and and all these movements should be super targeted and small and controlled, uh, um, and um, that's generally what pe not people find online, uh, you know, on YouTube or wherever, uh, and and I don't know I've been there because when I treated facial paralysis patient in the in the past before I had it and started getting into this that's all you could find was online it's just this exaggerated movement and mm -hmm. that, that's really a disservice to do this with someone that is in the flaccid paralysis stage because that can really make their face even tighter and then lead to uh to synchinesis which is uh one of the main complications of facial paralysis so which is super difficult to treat once it's there uh, and it's basically just a relearning the wrong movement pattern of the face and where you'll see the eye and the mouth moving at the same time. Uh, for example, with like eating or chewing, smiling, and you'll have the eye that closes. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so it, that's, that's kind of where I, I am. I have patients, the patient that found me early on, it's great because they, they progress fairly fast and they... Uh, so we, we basically prevent, even if they're pretty tight, we prevent that synchronicities from setting in because they're doing the right thing. They just don't keep trying to move their face when, when they don't have any movement. So, uh, right. yeah, so there's a, there's a lot that can be done. Um, uh, yeah. Ends on for sure. Right. It would be like trying to tell a stroke patient, just walk normally. Yeah, exactly. Or just, <laughs> just, just move normally. What's up with these? I don't believe in these. Uh, oh gosh, I, I'm not a, I'm not a neuro, neuro PT. What are those called? Those, um, synergies that they have or something. Oh, the, the, the yeah. movements that are like, you know, like all linked together because of tone and they can't move certain ways. Yeah. Yeah. I can't find the, the word right now, but yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, you can tell neither one of us treat stroke <laughs> patients, but I, you know, I always wondered about that too, because I've seen CP patients and I've seen, uh, you know, CP patients for MSK issues. And then yeah. I just to say hey you know what let me see if this soft tissue work will actually help your grip when or your your opposition and and it has between that and something like mirror box training who someone you wouldn't yeah. think to do you know like these out of the box manual therapy is not just for pain it's not just for right uh, msk you know yep yeah, exactly all right yeah, I, yeah for for facial paralysis it's pretty important just to get that uh that input on the, you know, on the face, just for, yeah. for brain, brain memory and, and mapping. And just so, especially for long, long-term people that don't have movement for several months at a time, it's super important to have that, that manual input. So. Now, now, do you think that patient who I saw after 20 years, should I have actually tried to work on her motor? Cause I just thought that I, I won't be able to restore motor. I'd just be able to restore the, the symmetry. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's worth a try. I've, I've seen it with uh, people that had that had synchronesis for like 10, 15 years, and we made some improvement with that. So with their, okay. their movement pattern. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's worth a try. Uh, it might be kind of a very slow, slow process. And, and that's generally, I mean, I, I have a lot of patients that I see over, you know, I see once a month or every every six weeks uh and give them homework to work on and make sure that they're doing it right but it's not something that progress super fast so uh yeah. I, I think yeah it's something that uh that can help for sure 
All right. Well, I have a patient who contacted me from Portland and was getting dry needled and said that she was willing to fly all the way to Buffalo also Yeah. to see if I would dry needle her. And I'm like, well, even though I'm training it because I can't do it in New York State, but I'm like, I don't think I suggested I could do soft tissue work, but I'm just going to send her to you. <laughs> Yeah, and I, so actually, I can't. So that's the same thing here in Washington. We can't dry needle. I think the the acupuncture acupuncturist lobby kind of put their kibosh on that. So Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, but uh, there's uh, there's a, a actually there's a new research um, coming out actually of, out of um, the Center for Facial Paralysis that's in Maryland, I think, and uh, uh, they presented at the. the facial nerve uh, symposium this year, which I attended, and they are doing what's called sinky needling. So it's basically dry needling on those fibrotic tissue uh, and it's ultrasound guided. And it's just to basically just kind of flatten that out and, and smooth it out. And uh, apparently they have good results. So I have not seen it in person or nor uh, done it myself. So I'm, I'm not sure too much, but that's that looked quite interesting. Okay. All right. Well, Yeah. all right. Well, so um, where can people find you on social media, your website, or if you have anything uh, you Yeah, want to I talk am. about? Uh, I'm mostly on Instagram and Facebook. So uh, my handle is Butophysio, and uh, I do have a Facebook group called the Bell's Palsy Solution, um, uh, where I, I, I post uh, and, and guide people there. There's a lot of um, of material as well that's available, and I also have um, the Bell's Palsy uh, tutorial, which is uh, available on my website, and um, I will um, give you a coupon code for, for this, for anyone that's interested, so. All right. Thanks for coming up here. You're very welcome. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Have a good day. You too. Untold Physio Stories is now sponsored by MyPT Insurance. Insurance just got easier. Through continued research, MyPT Insurance has crafted a policy that is economical and provides you with the peace of mind you need. Your extensive education, training, and experience as a PT allows you to assist clients in achieving their personal health goals. By practicing without individual professional liability insurance, you could be placing your career and future finances at risk. Whether you're a student, self-employed, or employed with a company, MyPT Insurance is here to provide affordable insurance coverage while protecting you and your patients. MyPT Insurance's plan also includes mobile coverage, which means it follows you wherever you work in the United States. Employed rates and self-employed rates are available. Visit myptinsurance.com edge to sign up today.